in this video here we want to work with LEDs just a little bit we know we when we put LEDs in circuits they light up and we discussed in a previous video that you always need a resistor in series with an LED to protect it so you don't blow it out a 9 volt battery will certainly blow out any LED almost immediately uh, so we'll look at that just a little bit some properties of LEDs and in particular just to practice using our meter and to introduce you to how voltages work in a circuit a little bit. We'll use this simple LED circuit here and make some measurements with the meter and just sort of have a lot of fun here. So let's just take a look. First thing I will do is just put a standard red LED right into this circuit here. So it's sort of broken here um, in the circuit. I don't have anything operating right now. But if I go ahead and put the LED in so it shares these columns with the output of the resistor and the input of that last red wire there, you see that the LED is on. And it's nice and red. I'm not sure if it's going to look red on the video, but it's uh, red as far as I can see it right now. And just the other thing about LEDs is recall that they have this flat edge, which has to be oriented more negative. So I have the flat edge over here. And if I take the LED out and sort of flip it up the reverse way so the flat edge points the other way, nothing happens at all. So LEDs are these so-called polar devices. They have sides that must be, one side must be more positive than the other. And it turns out the flat edge for LEDs is marked that way because that's the side that needs to be more negative. And when I say more negative, it means it needs to point Towards, directly towards the negative terminal of the battery, which is this black wire right here, not the positive or red terminal. So just a couple things with voltages now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the circuit. I'm just going to sort of measure the voltages that seem to be appearing across the resistor and the LED and sort of see what I get. So the first thing I'll do here is just sort of measure the voltage across the resistor, and I'm going to do that by just taking my two voltmeter probes. You can see the region right there, and just hold them directly on the metal parts of the resistor here while the circuit's on and see what I get and I get something about 6 volts. So there's 6 volts across the resistor. Now if I do the same thing for the LED, I'm going to touch my two probes across the leads of the LED. Let's see what I get. I get about 2.48. So 6 volts plus about 2.5 is 8.5 volts. And that's an interesting number because that number is the one that I would get across the entire circuit. So if I hold one of my leads here across the red terminal of the battery, and sort of stick the other one in here, right where the black terminal of the battery is, there's my 8.5 volts. So see, there's 8.5 volts across the entire circuit. That's what the battery presents. And I'm seeing 6 across the resistor and 2.5 and across the LED. So that's something. So let's take the red out, and let's put in this little one right here. It's just smaller form factor, but has the flat edge on it. And I happen to know it's a blue LED. Yeah, so I don't know if it'll look blue on the video. It certainly looks blue to me here. Let's do the same thing with the voltage measurements here. Across the resistor now I'm getting about four and a half volts. And across the resistor I'm getting, excuse me, across the LED I'm getting about four volts. So four and a half and four. The voltages have changed, but notice that there's some still eight and a half. And that's what I'm getting when I put the voltmeter across the entire circuit like this again. So four and four and a half. The voltages have changed for sure, but they still add up to 8.5 volts, so they're always adding up to what the total battery supply is here. Here's the third LED, sort of the final one we'll look at here. I think this is a green one. Yeah, it's nice and green. Again, not sure what it'll look like on the video, but it looks green to me here. If I measure the resistance across the resistor now, excuse me, the voltage across the resistor, 5.7 volts. Across the LED, 2.7. 5.7 and 2.7. Again, that adds up to 8.5 different voltages, though. And I'm still getting about 8.5 across the entire circuit. So there's a little lesson for you right there. A couple things about LEDs. Let's just wrap it up. It turns out that all these different colored LEDs, they operate differently because of the colors that they emit. And so when they're fully on here, the voltage that each LED will have across it will be different. The red was different than the blue was different than the green. That will happen, and that is a function of the material in which they're made out of. In other words, red, blue, and green, because of the quantum physics inside the devices, they will demand different voltages across them when they are fully on. And so if they demand a certain voltage across it, and we have a total voltage across the whole thing, which we know is always has to be set to 8.5 because it's a battery, well then the remaining voltage must be distributed across any other components in the circuit, in this case just a little resistor. So we always saw the sum of the voltage across the resistor and the LED, no matter which color, was always 8.5, but the individual voltages could be a bit different, and that's just a ramification about electronic circuits. 
that if you start at the positive terminal of the battery, you will always get the battery voltage. And as you go all the way down to across the circuit, all the way to the negative terminal of the battery, you must be at zero again. So what it's sort of saying is that the battery is the highest voltage in the circuit, zero is the lowest portion, and if you go around the circuit, you must sort of go from the highest voltage all the way down to zero again. And we saw that happening in the case of the red LED when this was four and this was four and a half. We start at nine, eight and a half volts here, should be a nine volt battery, but eight and a half volts. If we go down four volts, now we're at four and a half volts at this point right here. If we go down another four and a half, we'll be at zero. So this is a little bit of evidence of something called Kirchhoff's laws, which you can sort of read about on the internet or sort of uh, research a bit if you want. But it says if you travel around an electric circuit, the voltages around the circuit must always equal to zero. And we saw that here.